I was lurking you on the past month, on the 26th, on the 27th. It was an amazing conference. It was my first Larcon. I was super excited for it. And I also gave a talk, which was super exciting as well. I think I, I did well-ish. I hope it was good. But uh, it was just an amazing experience. And I also got to meet a lot of internet friends, which was one of the things I was the most excited about. The conference was great. The talks were great. The event infrastructure was amazing. But getting to know my only friends was probably the best part of it. And I also got this super cool gift from Kanak on Flick Nelson. Um, in case you can recognize, it's me. It's my Twitter pick on a Portuguese title. Like, this is super cool. This is one of the coolest gifts I have ever received. So, my talk's title was Scaling the Monolith. And it basically talked about some problems you face when scaling applications and patterns and strategies you can use to fix those. So, I covered, um, not in depth, but I covered um, databases, web, um, web servers, the code base itself, that kind of thing. But the core of the talk was mostly background processing and caching. Since I only had 30 minutes, I couldn't cover all of it, so I focused on those pieces. Now, what does this have to do with this video? As you may have seen from the title, it's probably called something like your application does not need to scale or something among those lines, I don't know yet. And the point is, after I gave the talk, I received some questions and I also had some discussions. And I already had this idea in my hand that most people, including myself, overestimate uh, how much power an application needs. So we sometimes over-engineer thinking about a future that never comes, or sometimes we just think that we need more processing power than we really need. The thing is, today we have a lot of computing power, whether you're using AWS, DigitalOcean, Linux, it doesn't matter. You just have a lot of processing power for relatively affordable prices, and languages are already super fast. Even to Winston goes and says, um, I don't know, this language is slow. For something to be slow, it needs to be compared against something else. So if you say, okay, PHP or Ruby are slow, then you go, okay, compared to what? And if you compare it to C or REST, then yes, they are slow compared to C and REST, but they are fast enough for most applications. Like there is a fraction of applications that sure cannot run on PHP or Ruby. Like if you're doing some transcoding stuff, that kind of shit, then yes, maybe you should go with another language. But for most use cases, those languages are probably more than you need. That is, if you do things right. So if you configure your web server properly, if you're writing good code um, on the database side, if you have the proper data types, if you have the proper indexes, if you're not writing some super weird SQL queries, what I mean, what, if, what I want to say is for most applications, just using a reliable framework and a well-known database does the trick. You don't need to do weird caching strategies. You don't need a super complicated auto scaling setup in most cases. So I ran this Twitter poll um, to see, based on my follower base, um, how many rows in the database their application handed. And I'm gonna focus on the database of this video because we just can't cover everything in the database is usually the first bottleneck. So the first thing that starts to get slow, it starts to hit some very slow queries, um, which means that requests take longer which also means that the following requests are going to hang and then you get gate timeouts. So it's usually, in my experience, one of the first things that starts the grade. And as you can see, about a third is handling applications with more than 20 million rows. Um, and the rest is handling applications that do not reach that usage. Um, in the replies, there's some people running applications that have more than a billion rows. So of course you have those more extreme situations, I have been there as well. Um, but I would say that most people are not running gigantic applications. I, I would say most of us are writing applications that are either used internally or that did not serve a very large customer base, which doesn't mean they're not complex. They can be complex and serve a small customer base or be used by a few people or not process a lot of data. This is not directly correlated, I would say. So when you say that an application doesn't handle a lot of data, I'm not necessarily saying that an application is not complex. It can definitely be complex and not handle a lot of data or not serve a lot of users. So what I want to do now is show you how powerful a simple database like MySQL is. And this is just a local setup. This is just a task I did on my own. But these days you have MySQL, you have Postgres, you have managed services like PlanetScale and Single Sort which are going to manage your database for you. So you can kind of forget the infrastructure side 
and focus on shipping code and shipping better code, better queries, better data. Those databases by themselves are already very powerful, very, very powerful. So my point is we have a lot of computing power these days and I think most people overestimate what their app needs. So let's take a look at the database and see what we can do with the amount of data that we have. That's about 34 million rows or something like that. So let's jump into the code. All right, so I set up a test database. It has two relevant tables, contacts and messages. As you can see, a messenger has an reference to contact. It also has a JSON field, a daytime field, and a contact is pretty simple. The first thing I want you guys to see is we have almost 30 million records on the contacts table and it weights about two and a half gigs. The messages table, on the other hand, has almost 13 million records and it's almost the same size. And why am I saying this? It's because we have about 42 million records and it's only occupying five gigs of storage, which means that if you had a MySQL server with eight gigs of RAM, it would be able to fit those two tables in memory. And this is super important because if for this amount of data, you can fit all of this in memory, it means that maybe data is not as heavy as we seem to think, at least to me. Now, let's run some queries. Let's run a select from contacts. Obviously, I forgot to add a limit, so let's limit to 100 contacts. Okay, pretty fast. Now, let's pick a random contact. Let's pick this guy, Clint and let's try to query by their phone number. So we would say your phone equals this number. Okay, now this is getting weird because this query is taking a while and we definitely do not want this to happen to our application. Let's wait and see how long it takes. Okay, 13 seconds, that's really, really bad. Now, if we go here and we simply add an index to this column. So let's go ahead. Yes, phone. Let's set an index. This is probably going to take a while. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, that took a while. Now let's go back and rerun the same query. Much faster, right? Two and a half milliseconds. Now you might be thinking, okay, this is super basic. Why would someone not add an index? Well, it happens. Sometimes people do not think that a table would need a certain index in a column for it to run to be performant, sometimes you forget about it. And I've seen this happen countless times, several queries that were super slow and the only reason was a missing index. And that's why I said that you gotta do the basics right. If you do the backbone work properly, you're probably not going to have any issues. Most applications are not doing super complex queries, super complex data aggregation. It usually works fine if you have the proper indexes and the proper data types. And for you to be able to pinpoint those issues, for example, to know that this query wasn't using an index, you can either go manually and run an explain on the query, and it is using an index now, or you can use observability tools, like I mentioned previously, to help you spot those problems, to help you spot slow queries. And then you can go, okay, um, this query is taking 13 seconds there might be something wrong with it. It's either not using an index or maybe the query is super unoptimized or maybe this query is pulling a lot, it's scanning a lot of rows and only returning a few. You have ways, you have tools to help you find those problems. And that's what's really important. If you just add more servers, if you just scale up your infrastructure and you have those foundation problems, it's not gonna fix it. It, it might delay it a little bit. You might, you know, put a bandaid on it but that bandage is gonna, it's gonna fall off at some point. So doing the basics is really, really important. Even in a table with 30 million records, um, finding something by the index is really fast. And obviously you might say, okay, this is a really simple example. Yes, I'm not gonna do something complex for a video, but if you were to order um, a message by when it was sent, you can add an index for that as well. If you want to order it by contact ID and when it was sent, you can use a compound index, which is something that, believe it or not, a lot of people do not know about. You can have indexes for multiple columns. And that's a little bit more complicated because you have to write your where clauses in a certain order. I'm not a database expert, so I'm going to leave a link in the description to an article by my friend Aaron Francis 
explaining indexes, how they work, and how you can use them to their best potential. But I hope that made sense. I just want to show you some data and show how 42 million records is not that much. It's less than we think. It's at least less than what I would think. So hopefully that was helpful somehow. All right, cool. So I hope my experiment made some sense. And um, my point with this video again is not that not all applications need to scale. It's simply that most applications are fine with a reliable framework, a good database, and that's it. You might need some caching here and there, but you don't need to overestimate or over-engineer applications so much in most situations. We have a lot of computing power. You should use it. Most languages are more than fast enough for most use cases. You don't need to be micro-optimizing things. Focus on what matters. And when you're dealing with stuff like infrastructure, if possible, try to hand that off to someone else or to leverage that as fast as you can. Something that I noticed after my talk as well when speaking to people is that they hardly try to optimize what they have. They, they hardly try to fine tune MySQL or track queries that are slow. And it brings another point that's super important that I didn't mention, which is observability. For you to debug where the problem is, you need to have good observability. That means that you probably need an APM, an application performance monitoring. Um, you need to be able to track where that bottleneck is coming from. Is it the database? Is it the database that's slow? Or is it that one query that's super unoptimized that's taking a while to run? Or is it a query that doesn't have an index that's taking a while to run? So those things make a lot of difference. What really matters is the basics. If you have your data types nailed down, if you have your indexes correct, if you have the proper SQL queries, if your web server is properly configured, then you're probably on the right track. You probably do not need to worry so much about scalability. Now, if those things are not properly set up, if you don't have the correct data types, if you don't have the correct indexes, if you cannot pinpoint where the problems are, if you don't have any observability, then sure, you can increase your infrastructure, you can set up load balancers, you can set up sharding, but the problem is going to continue there and you're going to have to face that all the time. You're going to keep, you know, running after your own tail. You're going to add one more server, but it's still going to be slow because you have a core problem that you haven't fixed. So focus on the basics, do things the right way, and you, you will usually not have to worry about infrastructure. When you do have to worry about infrastructure, if you've done things right, you're probably at a place where you can afford to either hire someone to deal with that or uh, to use in managed service to deal with that for you. But uh, that that's just my two cents. Let me know what you guys think. And I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.